Good morning, dear students. In the last module, we had discussed the concepts of velocity and speed. Essentially, the velocity used in different ways like average velocity and instantaneous velocity and so on. Whenever a body is moving with velocity, we have known that the displacement will be increasing depending on the nature of the velocity. If the velocity is positive, displacement will increase. If the velocity is negative, the displacement will decrease and so on. Now, velocity also depends on something else that is called acceleration. When the velocity is not constant, when the body is moving with different velocities or the velocity of a body is changing from time to time, time, to time then we say the body is moving with acceleration. Acceleration is therefore, is responsible for the change in velocity. In a way, change in velocity that is occurring every moment, moment to moment, is metered by what is called acceleration. The change in velocity per unit time is defined as acceleration. Our present module is to discuss about that acceleration and the concept of similarly the way average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration like what you have seen in the velocity. <clears throat> As I just now said, the change in velocity is caused by acceleration and how much change is generated in a given time, unit time, tells you what acceleration is like. In other words, we define acceleration as change in velocity by time taken. Change in velocity by time taken. That means, suppose the body is moving with velocity v1 in the x direction at some time t1 seconds. After some time t2 seconds, the velocity becomes V2x. Then the change that has come in the velocity is V2 to V1. That difference has come. It was initially V1, then it has become V2. This is what we call as change in velocity. Then time taken is from T1 to T2 the interval is t2 minus t1. Therefore, acceleration in the x direction there what we said is given by, is given as average acceleration again here because this is the initial velocity, this is final velocity over an interval there and this acceleration is what is called as average acceleration. The acceleration which we are now talking about is ac average acceleration because we are talking about two instances, one discrete time at t1 seconds, another t2, t2 can be any this time for example, an hour or two whatever the case may be. So therefore, this change in velocity by time taken ratio gives you what is called average acceleration there. Actually average acceleration means the velocity, net change in velocity by time taken there. When you are moving in a vehicle there, when you sit in the vehicle and then increase your speed by accelerator there, the accelerator increases the speed. How the accelerator is increasing the speed there, how much acceleration you are producing there, you cannot know directly in that instance there. Because that will not be, you know the speedometer will be there. The speed increase, increase in the speed is seen there, all right. But the rate at which it is happening is not known to you. You will know what speed you are, how, what's, how the pointer is moving there, showing higher speed and all that in the speedometer can be seen. But at what rate it is increasing, you cannot know. So that is what acceleration means. So there was what you will do when you start what was the speed, out of some 10, 15 seconds, what is the speed now in the speedometer. Take the difference that has a change in velocity over the time that gives you average velocity, average acceleration there. But actually, every moment there can be a change in the velocity taking place there. So in such a case, average velocity, uh, acceleration 
is the change in velocity over a time period and averaged over the time there. It is been taken averaged over the time there. So either by by and large the average is this. That is what is called acceleration. We can show this as delta v delta t. You show that. You see for example, the body has started with a speed of 18 kilometers per hour. Uh, v1 we call it. And it has become 54 kilometers per hour. Say after some 10 seconds. Say. Then what is the acceleration now? Average acceleration. We say like this. Average acceleration. If you want we can show x here indicating the x direction. Because you can simply write average acceleration that is there. And it is 54 kilometers per hour is V2. And V1 is 18 kilometers per hour. And the entire thing is taking place in 10 seconds. This is 10 seconds. Whether this is kilometers per hour. But while calculating, you must have all those things in the same units. So you know, 1 kilometer per hour means, you must be knowing that, 1 kilometer means 1000 meters, hour means 60 into 60 seconds, 60 minutes into 60 seconds. Each minute is 60 seconds again. So this comes out as 5 by 18 meters per second. So if you want to convert kilometer per hour, then you have to multiply with that. So 54 uh, minus 18 into 5 by 18, so many meters per second, divided by 10 seconds here. If you calculate this, you will get acceleration directly in that. So you will see when you work out, you will get 1 meter per second square. Why like that we are writing? This is so many meters per second. This again second here. So unit will be meters per second again per second. So it comes as meter per second square as the unit for the acceleration. So by average, 1 meter per second square every second it is increasing. That is what this numerical example tells us. That is how we calculate the average acceleration. So whenever you are talking about a range of uh, time, then what you talk as acceleration is average acceleration that is important there. If you talk about the acceleration that is taking place at every moment, actually at every second, a fraction of a second also it is increasing, velocity is increasing. This tells you about 1 meter per second. What about within a second? Within a second how it is changing we don't know there. This only tells about the interval of 1 second on the average as a whole. So therefore, if you want to know at every moment, every, sec every instance how it is changing, then we bring in the term what is called as instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration. When you talk about average acceleration, we have given the equation as delta V by delta T. This delta V by delta T is change in velocity by time taken along x direction. Like just like what you see in the case of velocities, if the inter time interval is changing and it has been reduced to small 0, 0, 0 value, closest to 0, then what happens, suppose the body is moving along a straight line, at this point, when the velocity is, when the acceleration is taking place at every point there, and from here to here, the time is delta t, and if delta t, delta t tends to 0, that means try to approach it to 0, then you will come up to one point where instantaneously the body is there, and there you will get instantaneous acceleration. So that means you have to make this equation limited to a delta t which is very close to 0. That means in other words we write limit of delta v x by delta t with delta t tending to 0, what you get is what is known as instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration. Generally we represent this as acceleration a. Simply we say a like that. When you say like that, it means acceleration along the x direction at a particular instant there. Whenever you say the body is moving with an acceleration at a point, talking about instantaneous acceleration only, and that is given by the operation just like in the case of velocity, 
the operation of differentiation is to be given here. This is represented as dvx by dt. That is a differentiation of velocity with reference to time. That means find change in velocity smaller, 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 smaller intervals and practically when it becomes zero, you will get instantaneous acceleration there and that change in velocity in the instantaneous condition there is difficult to be physically calculated there. Therefore, mathematically there is a method. This is what the calculus tells you about that. This means the velocity is changing with time. Where is reference to time there? It is a function of time and differentiate with reference to time now such that you can go to smallest time interval as close to zero, then you will get this. Then how do you work out this one? Once again we work out this using the formula for differentiation like what we said for anything in general, any function that is differentiated of say for example t power n, suppose there is a function like what we gave in the last module t power n, then we write as n into t power n minus 1. This is the displacement equation we had given there, differentiation formula for displacement equation there. Similarly, with the variable velocity also we can write. Give the velocity changing with the time, like this t power n, say, changing with the time. Then dvx by dt is given by n into t minus 1, t into, sorry, is given by n into t power n minus 1. So that is what the acceleration at that moment is instantaneous acceleration. You can find out this acceleration at any given instant of time. T is equal to 1 second you can find, 2 seconds you can find, 3 seconds you can find all that. What is n here? It is the power at which the T is depend is uh, making the velocity vary there in the function there. N is a integer there, some number there. So this is what the instantaneous acceleration is. Instantaneous acceleration has the same uh, concept like what we have in the instantaneous velocity as for the instant is concerned. That is velocity, this acceleration there is a difference here. At that moment what, how the velocity is increasing or changing there is difficult to physically to be known. It is only possible to be known mathematically if you understand the concept there. As I said, the continuous increase in change of the velocity or decrease in change in velocity has to be known only this way. That is called instantaneous acceleration. We take up an example here say acceleration, velocity of body is changing with the uh, time given by 2t square minus 4 suppose. That is how it is varying with the time. Then what is the acceleration? Acceleration is given by dv by dt. That is what it is. We call it vx, say in the x direction. This is from the same formula that is t power n differentiation, you know, is given by n into t power n minus 1. That is the formula we said. So, you can use it here. n is 2 here. So, 2 into 2 it is 4. n minus 1 means 2 minus 1 is t and is again constant, has no derivative there. There is no differentiation for that. You will get 0 there. So, the answer is acceleration is 40, instantaneous acceleration is 40. That means if t is equal to 0, acceleration is 0. If t is equal to 1 second, then acceleration is equal to 4 meters per second square. If t is equal to 2 seconds, acceleration is 8 meters per second square. It is like that. It is increasing. So, from 1 second to another second, how it is increasing, it is given there in that. This is 4, this is 2, you put this 1 here, you get 4 here. Put 0 here, you will get 0 there. Put 2 here, you will get 8 here. And you go on knowing at every moment, every second, at every instant, you can find out the acceleration taking place there. With reference to acceleration, we also come across a word called retardation. Generally, we will be using this sometimes. Retardation or it is also known as deceleration, we call it. That means the decreasing velocity. We are, when, you, when the increasing velocity is there, that means positive uh, change in velocity is taking place, then we call it acceleration. That means delta V by delta T, delta V by delta T 
is positive, then we call it as acceleration. If delta V by delta T is negative, then we call it as retardation or deceleration. So, deceleration is not different. It is only the acceleration in the reverse direction now. That means it is decreasing this acceleration now. Suppose, for, for example, a body is moving with a velocity like say 54 kilometers per hour and it is after some time it has become say uh, 18 kilometers per hour or sometimes suppose the velocity has become 18 kilometers per hour then velocity has decreased say this has taken a, a time of say from uh, some uh, 10 seconds say then what about this acceleration now in this case? If you write the same definition as delta V by delta X, delta V by delta T, then this acceleration is 54 into 5 by 18 converting into meters per second. My, this is the first case. What will be change in velocity? I will work out here. If you convert this into uh, meters per second, it becomes 15. Uh, 5 meters per second. This will be 54 into 5 by 18. This becomes 15 meters per second in this case. So, convert them into meter per second for our convenience in the application. So, acceleration therefore, which you say instantaneous acceleration here, 10 seconds you have got there, you want to find out what the acceleration is. In this case, then it is this 5 meters per second minus that 15 meters per second by those 10 seconds. This tells you this is minus 10 by 10, that is 1 meter per second square with a minus sign. That means velocity is decreasing with time as you can see here. So decreasing velocity means we call it retardation. So, with reference to velocity only, you will know whether it is increasing velocity or decreasing velocity. Sometimes, I uh, will show another example here. What do you mean by increasing velocity and decreasing velocity? Suppose there is a body moving along x axis like this. It is moving like this, the x axis, suppose. The velocity is in this direction. That is why it is moving in the direction, suppose. Only there is a velocity here. Now, on this, a retardation takes place. That means, the negative acceleration takes place, suppose, here. Negative acceleration takes place. Then, what happens? This velocity goes on decreasing. But still, the body will be moving in the same direction. So, the nature of motion of the body will not tell you whether it is increasing velocity or decreasing velocity. It is only change in velocity that tells you that it is acceleration or deceleration there. Therefore, what you have to understand is, a body moving with constant acceleration can have its velocity decreasing also. Constant acceleration means that acceleration is in the opposite direction of the velocity. Therefore, we call it as deceleration. All right. So, that is how you have to understand. So, acceleration and deceleration are the same word. Only thing is that sign that matters. Sign what is sign with reference to velocity. If velocity and acceleration both are in the same direction, suppose, both are negative, suppose, there is a body moving with a velocity in this direction it is moving to this direction say velocity is negative here and acceleration also in the same direction suppose that is also negative both are in the same direction then what happens the vehicle will have velocity increasing velocity in this direction increasing negative will be there it does not mean there is something negative about it increasing negative means it is increasing its value in this direction that means it is making it to move it like this so, it is only a question of relative direction that you have to understand when you talk about retardation like that. So, acceleration or retardation are one and the same. Instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration difference must be known. Instantaneous acceleration means at one point there. So, that is what is to be remembered. We can also follow this uh, change in velocity and thus understand acceleration with the help of a graph also. A graph like what you had seen in the case of velocity. We talked about displacement time graph, where x coordinate is changing with the time. And from the graph, we can get the nature of the acceleration, uh, the nature of the velocity there. 
Similarly, when you velocity is changing with time, you can draw a graph between velocity and time from time to time. That can be put on a graph paper. We call it as velocity time graph. See, on the x-axis we take time here, on the y-axis we take velocity, vx. Then, how the, the velocity will be, it can be shown, seen here. When the velocity is, the graph that is drawn here, time graph drawn here, is parallel to x-axis, suppose now. What does this indicate? It indicates the velocity is there, t is equal to 0, there is some velocity here, called as a v0. And that is constant throughout. It is the same value throughout. Same value throughout. It indicates it is moving with constant velocity. When the velocity is constant, what about acceleration? Acceleration means change in velocity. Change in velocity is zero here. Remember, delta x by delta t, when you call it, delta v by delta t here. This is zero because delta v is 0, there is no change in velocity there. So, when a move, body is moving with constant velocity, acceleration is 0. Then, when increasing velocity, how it will be? Put a graph between time and velocity, vx, increasing velocity will be like that. So, this will be a straight, if this is a straight line like this, it indicates constant acceleration now. Constant acceleration. Why like that? You take any interval here, say. So this interval tells you the velocity here is v1x, v2x. This difference is what is called as delta v. And the difference between these two points on the x-axis gives you the time interval delta t. So, when you take delta x by delta t, no, sorry, delta v x by delta t, what are you getting here? You are getting the slope. This is delta v x, this is delta t. You are getting the slope tan theta. Delta v x by delta t by definition is what is called acceleration. That is why that is called the acceleration along the x direction. And this value is the same wherever you take the slope on the line. It is a straight line, a constant slope thing. So, when the constant slope is there, acceleration is constant. That is what it means. So, that is how a velocity time curve in a straight line can be known. So, in this case, the velocity is increasing, you can see with time. Therefore, this is positive acceleration. That also you can understand from this. Suppose you have a graph like this. What about this graph now, see? This is time, this is velocity. This is also something like this only you can see. This is also a straight line, this is also a straight line. Only difference is, it is starting from the origin, it is starting from a different point here. Whereas, this is zero time, t is equal to zero. So, t is equal to zero, there is already some velocity in this. We call it as initial velocity. And with time, it is increasing from there further. So, if you take the slope anywhere you want, once again, you will get constant velocity only. Sorry. Once again, you get only, when you take the slope anywhere, you get always the constant acceleration. Constant slope will come, that means constant acceleration will come. So, constant acceleration means like the same straight line case here also. Only difference is, initially it is starting with initial velocity, when t is equal to 0, velocity also is equal to 0. Here it is not that, it is something different. So, that is what we can see. Suppose the acceleration is not a constant, then in one word to say you will not get a straight line. It will be a curve then. What will be nature of curve there? We shall see that. Suppose there is time axis like this, velocity axis, and it is not a constant now. Acceleration is not a constant, so you will not get a straight line. Any shape can be there. I will give one example, this shape. Therefore, let us say this shape. This shape shows the velocity is increasing with time, but not linearly like in the case of a straight line, like what you have seen earlier. So, there is some second degree variation, or third, whatever the case is, curve is there, varying there. 
variation is shown by a curve. So, if you take the acceleration at any point, you want to find out, first find out velocity at this point, velocity at this point from the graph and what you get is say it is v1 x, this v2 x, then time interval here is to be taken from t1 to t2. So, like this you take it, then the net change in velocity will come here. This straight line indicates on the y axis, this gives you net change in the velocity. That is v2 x minus v1 x. So, this gives you that change. This change in velocity is here. By time taken, the time is delta t. So, what you get by delta v x by delta t now in this case is what is called the average acceleration only. Um, understand that. Because uh, actually the path, the path of variation of the velocity is like this. Whereas, you are only talking about two points, one here, one there and making a straight line between them calling a overall variation there. So, when you talk about a general overall variation from one point to another point over a range of interval like that, then what you get is only average acceleration there. When this average acceleration you have to get as instantaneous acceleration, that means you want acceleration at any one point here, then you must make this interval as small as possible. We must make the delta t tend to 0. When delta t tends to 0, what happens? This straight line becomes a tangent at the point there. It becomes something like this. So, this point, the other point is close by here. P1, P2 come close by like that. You will see that the tangent will be made here. So, now what you are going to get as a slope is the slope of this tangent here. You can take from anywhere, but the slope tangent will come. Some delta v by delta t. The slope gives you, this gives you the slope tan theta of the tangent. This is tangent here. Slope of the tangent at that point where you are taken. So, this gives you the acceleration at that point p1. This is what is called as instantaneous acceleration now. Instantaneous acceleration. So, you can get instantaneous acceleration by drawing this velocity time curve like this and take the tangent at any point where you want the instantaneous velocity and find out the slope of the tangent at that point there. So, if you do like that, you can get instantaneous acceleration from the graph. This way also it can be obtained. So, average acceleration also can be known. Instance acceleration also can be known from the graph like this. And also the nature of the graph tells us what sort of acceleration is taking place there. Like we have seen just now, when it is increasing like on the first quadrant like that in the graph there, then we say it is acceleration. This is also acceleration. There is also acceleration increasing there. Positive acceleration we call it. Acceleration is positive. Here also it is positive acceleration. Suppose you have got a curve, straight line that is coming down there sloping say. You have got something like this. This means there is initially some velocity here. This velocity, this is time. Initially there is some velocity and that velocity is decreasing with time. As time increases, the velocity is decreasing down. You can see it. In such a case, out some time the body may even come to rest say. That means velocity becomes zero out some time here. So, this is what is called a negative acceleration. That means acceleration opposite to velocity. Acceleration and velocity are opposite to each other here. Therefore, what happens? Velocity will decrease and uh, will decrease because of the negative acceleration taking place. This is what is called as retardation or deceleration we said. Retardation or deceleration we said. So, like that the shape of the curve also will tell us. If the straight line up in the forward direction, in the upward in the first quadrant there, you will find it as the positive one, otherwise it is negative one. Then, suppose you have got a graph like this. This is time. 
and there is some curve like that. Here also the velocity is decreasing with time. You can see that just like this. But it is in a straight line. This is not a straight line. It is a curve there. So this tells you about a complicated variation taking place than there. Slope is not constant here. That means this is not constant deceleration. Here is constant deceleration. So that is what you can see in this. You can have like that. A body may be moving with various varieties of velocities and accelerations. And the shape of the curves will tell us what it means. Like for example, suppose a body is having velocity time curve given something like that say. This indicates sometime the velocity is increasing here. It is increasing like this. The tangent shows increasing velocity that is uh, acceleration here positive. It is decreasing you can see. This is what we can see here as negative acceleration. Instantaneously here the acceleration is zero. The body is traveling the constant velocity there. Instantaneously the velocity is constant here. So acceleration is zero there at this point at that time. So instantaneous acceleration here is positive, here it is negative, here it is zero also. And after some time here it is going parallel, that means it is going with constant acceleration throughout in the distance there. So various aspects of the nature of the acceleration can be known by the velocity time graph itself. So graphically also you can solve problems very conveniently there in this case. You can take any example from your books and try to work out that. Another point to be known here is when we have talked about the velocity at any instant, instant velocity is given by dx by dt we said. It is limit of delta x by delta t delta t tending to 0. Now you think of acceleration, we said it is dv by dt. So this is limit of delta v by delta t, delta t tending to 0. So if you know the variation of the displacement with the time also, you can find acceleration. Like for example, suppose the displacement of a body is given by the equation, some uh, 4 t square minus 3 t plus 7 suppose is given there like that and you are asked to find out what is the velocity instantaneous velocity at 1 second acceleration at 1 second suppose you want to know you can know from the equation there by differentiation only thing is you have to do like this first thing is velocity velocity will be known as dx by dt. So dx by dt that will tell you it is 2 into 4 that is 8 into 2. Formula you know nt minus nt power n minus 1. So minus 3 t power 1 therefore it is 3. Next term will not be there 0. This will be the differentiation with reference to t when you get velocity here. So t is equal to 1 your value will be here. 8 minus 3 that is 5 meters per second that is velocity. Suppose you want to find out acceleration now. Acceleration is dv by dx again dv by dt again. So what you how do you know it? Differentiate this further again. Differentiating this further it will give you 8 t power minus 1 t power 1 here therefore it becomes 8 only. Again, this becomes constant in the second differentiation here, it becomes 0. So, it becomes 8 meters per second square. So, acceleration is 8 meters per second square. So, this will tell you, and there is no t here, again, you can see that. That means, acceleration t is equal to 1 or 2, whatever you take, acceleration is 8 only. That means, acceleration is a constant. That means, this displacement tells about a body moving with a constant acceleration along the x-axis. So the nature of acceleration and the value of acceleration can be known from the displacement equation also like this. That is what you have to understand in while doing the problems. So you can apply now the problems given in the module and try to work out and try to understand the worked out problems first 
and then try to work out the problems given in the exercise also there. Thank you.